All right. All right. Okay. Believe everyone. Thanks for, for taking time to come and listen to uh to Fast Track Property Market Updates. Uh, I have sent to you all the web link. I hope all is good. It's the first time I'm doing a webinar live like that. Normally, it's all through the Zoom meetings. Okay. So, uh, I understand here. I think if you have any Q and A, any questions as we go along, I'll try to make this as short as possible. Please keep inside the Q and A. So, with the panelists. Ben Lim is assisting me. You're able to solve the questions. And if need be, we will interrupt and answer it immediately. If not, then we put and collate all the questions to the end for us to share. Okay? If you want to interrupt me urgently, you can put raise hand. I'm able to see the notification here also. All right? So without further ado, let's just kick off. All right? Good evening, everyone. Today's scope, I'll be going to, uh, to go through with a few four things. The first thing will be HGV updates. All right? Um, private updates. And presently, I think all of you will be aware there's a lot of discounts the projects are giving and whether it is worth for you to put your money into such a project. And then finally, how you like to plan this forward. Okay, so I've gone through the, the, the whole uh, uh, um, session earlier and I realized that we might overshoot. Okay, so um, I'll try to make it as brief as possible, but I think some of the things I have to go into more details. Yeah, now. I purposely did this today because I wanted all the updates from the HDB reports, uh, the private reports to have the actual numbers instead of the flash estimates. And from there, this is what we have discovered. HDB market is at almost the all-time high. Uh, today, we have hit already, I think, uh, almost, you can see here, back to 2013 highs, all right? Total index is at 146.4. It's increased 3%, all right? But do know that all these charts that I'm showing you Take it with a pinch of salt because this is an average of all the transactions and volumes in Singapore. All right, this will be very different. I'm very sure if we will separate the old properties and the new properties, the, the graph will not be like that. Okay. Now, so this is um, taken off all from HDB website. You can see that there is a gradual increase of HDB properties. Right, it has been going down negatively. If you recall back in the past, back in 2018. And 2019, we were all hit with all the older properties and having very difficult time selling, right? On the ground, when we help our customers to sell our properties, uh, some of the older properties can take as long as up to a year, some to two years to sell a property. But today, let's just see, uh, in year 2020, when the pandemic happened, every started to fly off after, when, after the circuit breaker, right? You have 1.5%, 3.1%. And this year, in two quarters, we have already um, basically, we have exceeded 2020 uh, increase in terms of price index. And this year, I'm quite confident that with the other two more quarters, we might hit a 10% increase. Now, and this is something that I think is going to be very worrying. And I'll just share with you my thoughts about what it's going to be in future. All right. Okay, this is quite straightforward. I'm just going to share with you on a normal scenario, a normal year, what type of... Uh, Volume we're looking at from uh, one bedroom all the way to executive. Uh, this is for 2018. We have done 23,000 units. In 2019, you realize it's also around 23,000 units. Okay. And this is interesting because in 2020, you take a look at the third and fourth quarter, it has jumped uh, from a normal. Okay, this is the second quarter. Obviously, we're all at home. Um, for those of you who, who uh, experience it anyway, if you did and you sold your property during a lockdown, then you'll be one of those going through the virtual viewing and then buying a property online, isn't it? Okay, so third quarter, fourth quarter, we hit 7,000 units. And this year, in two quarters, we already hit 14,000 units. Okay, close to 15,000 units. So I personally believe that this year uh, for HGV properties, we are going to hit between 26 to 28,000 transactions. Yeah. Okay, now where is the demand coming from? And I got some of the information. This is back in, let me just think, November. Okay, this is in November 2020 selection, not selection, uh, application, right? Uh, we have two areas in non mature estates, and then the rest we have mature estates. And you can see the number of units available, if you add everything up, is at only 4,800 units, but the number of applicants uh, is actually five times the amount. All right, this actually tells you how strong the demand is for BTO units. Uh, this is our eligibility. It could be first timer or second timers. I have 
no clue. I try to read and I do not know how to do the average shout between the first and second timers, okay? Right? But there is there seems to be a second timer volume is quite high, especially in the Bishan area. Right. And I think it's because the price gap between the the um, newer properties, which is a private, and the HDB is really widening really a lot, right? And therefore these people who these uh, homeowners who are living in old properties, they know the issue about the time decay in their properties and are looking for alternative. Okay. Now this is going to be the conclusion for HTV, right? Very straightforward and easy to understand. Um from my personal analysis and, and, and also speaking to various people, I personally believe that the COV for HGV will continue this year and perhaps up to early next year. But it should normalize somewhere mid-2022 all the way to end 2022. Then the whole reason is this, is because I think that by the time most of the people in, in the world will be vaccinated and traveling will be okay and therefore the construction sector in terms of the pace of how they are of how they are actually building will pick up a BTO uh, time uh, instead of five to six years waiting time to get their keys, right? Will be shortened to the normal three to four years. All right. Now, uh, who else are actually and why what's the another reason why is there a pent up demand in the HDB resale market? And that is because of the SPRs, right? I think this pandemic has uh, created a lot of uh, um, decision-making, right? Um, from PRs, if you have any PR friend over here, all right, you can just comment in the, in the chat if you want to, right? And then those people that just came in, if you have any questions, you have to interrupt, put it in a Q&A. If not, those of you who are PRs and you decide to come to SC, what I heard on the ground is that many of our PR friends, they used to just decide to have one party to become a citizen, right? And it was rejected. Now they apply as a family, so they're able to bring back their children from Malaysia or other parts of the world back into Singapore. All right, and they want to stay here for good. And this is a small group of people, but it adds to the volume of purchase in HDB. Okay. Now, I have shared with some of you a story whereby I was uh, um I was given a task or restructuring one of my customers' portfolio, and they actually stayed in Amokyo, all right. And the Amokyo area basically is one of those blocks 700 ABCD, very near to the <clears throat> MRT station. When I heard that he has this unit for sale, I was really pleasantly delighted because it should be quite easy to sell. But when I was surprised when it was actually a second floor unit. When I visited the house, a five-room house, it was actually facing the multi story car park. Now, you ask any salesperson if anyone of us is tasked to sell such a property, normally the price we have to really put it way down and even though if we have a, 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 a more, much more affordable pricing it will still take time for buyers to come in to buy naturally right and these areas we predominantly mainly Chinese buyers right most of the Chinese prefer higher floors and I was really worried whether if Chinese is affected because my customer belongs to other races but anyway thank goodness the uh, for the month Chinese could buy and surprisingly, the property, I only had three viewings and it was closed within two weeks. And who bought it? It was actually a Chinese. All right. So I think now is the best time if all of you who have always been thinking of changing properties, I think in the old days, uh, um, those new properties which were built in year 2000 plus minus, you know, those ground floor units you open up, you face a rubbish bin, okay? The, the, the main shoot center. Or the second floor you open up, is also facing these two centers, all right? Uh, anything that is undesirable today, even for the old properties, guess what? Today's market, easy to sell because the property that I sold even commanded a COV, all right? So I was really surprised, right? Okay, um, next thing is that, uh, the, yeah, the first timers are coming in really, um, a lot of them are coming to the market. It is back in the 2012 era, 2011, where a lot of them are coming, their parents, because a lot of the, a lot of properties are transacting with COV today, right? And the reason why they opt out from the BTO is because of the long wait, right? Can you imagine today, if you're looking to buy a property, a BTO, you finally get a selection, and if that's if you, that is if you're lucky, right? If you're unlucky, you try it, you didn't get it, you wait for another three to four months, you try again, and by the time you try the third time, you're wasted one year, and when you finally selected the unit you wanted, you can only get the keys five to six years later. And you have to fulfill your MOP for another five years. An entire decade of your life is gone before you can even consider upgrading, right? So this is a struggle as therefore many first-timers decided to go into the resale market. 
and take on all the relevant grants. All right. Second question is that, uh, what does this mean? Uh? Paying higher prices for older la and larger units. Now, I call this the sandwich, sandwich class. Um, so, this pool of buyers perhaps uh, had their first BTO, income between five to seven to $8,000 plus minus. And they finally have made their first pot of gold, right? But then again, um, affordability for the prior market is too small because of the increasing household size, all right? But at the same time, they also want and desire to have a bigger space. So what do they do? do? They can, out of, it's out of reach to buy the older condo, the, the newer condominiums, all right? And a lot of such families, are, when they want their BTO, was actually at non matured estates. And for the past five years, they've been shuffling their children either to their parents' place, right? And it's, it's very tiring. And therefore, they have shifted towards where their parents are staying to take advantage of a grant. And because they made a, their first pot of gold making 150,000 k in profits, they reinvested it into an older and larger space, HDB, all right? A lot of them are like that today. They buy the older 5A units, big sizes, 133 to 138 square meters, or even the executive, executive units, all right? So these are the people who are actually, in a way, upgrading from HDB. Yet, today, if that is all that you think you can do, I do not think that, uh, 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 I think you should really think about that and don't do it because if you do that move, okay, though you have made your first pot of gold, right, but once you understand what the cooling measures is and the opportunity cost of you uh, buying this debt property, most probably your real estate um, investment or portfolio will come to a full stop. All right? Okay. So next on is um, we finished the HDV part, right? Now I'm going to move on to uh, some of you may not know who I am. Right, I've actually sent the, the email and the SMS to all of you, and I also invite us to invite your friends and families to listen to this webinar. Right, so I just want to share with you what is fast track property, who we are. For me, I believe in this. Everyone and anyone with the correct knowledge, strategies, and methods can achieve the Singapore dream of owning multiple properties within a low risk framework. Okay, now how do we do that? I will move into the five pillars of investment, right? So all my customers will go through with them these five pillars. Number one, very important to form the first pillar is entry price. What is the price that you're buying into? All right, is it safe? Is there growth in these properties? Is there any transformation in that area? The transformation is important because it escalates the capital uh, gains, it escalate your growth in your property, right? This is for government intervention. Now, uh, thirdly, it will be rentability. Though how much we are able to plan moving forward, right? Whatever graphs I can dig out, the future is something whereby it is not so, uh, it's a bit gray, right? We can always plan for the best, even though uh, signals will pen and, 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 and direct us towards the direction, but we must always uh, have a fallback position whereby what if the capital returns is not of something that is desired, we have to go into rentability, correct? So today I've enhanced this rentability for our customers by doing a real estate hack too or co-living. So if you have subscribed to my to my YouTube channel, Fast Track Property, you will see that I've actually did an entire detailed walkthrough of one of me and my partners under Prestige Living Consultancy. We did it for ourselves and for our customers and how we maximize the rental. In the normal market, such a property could command only 5,300. Okay, um, that place we rented out for 7,600. Uh, one of the tenants who rented for three months, they are moving out, uh, I think, end of August. We today just signed a contract with another, and this, and this is this is quite interesting because this is actually a local single lady. We signed a two years contract with us, all right? So if those of you who are concerned and you read the papers and you tell me, oh, there are no more tenants, uh, you know, uh, how can... It be renting when all the properties has already uh, um, TOP, then more people, more units will be in the market for rental, right? Then the rental prices will, will actually come down so and so forth. So, most important, right? When you read something, we have to analyze it and we want to hear from the ground because me and my guys are on the ground, we can feel the market. Okay? The fourth pillar will be exit strategy. For anything that we buy, unless you're buying for own stay, ultimately today, I personally feel that there has to still be an exit strategy. All right? And now for it, all five to come together will be financing and crisis fund. What mode of financing, how to finance this property, 
and then to create the crisis fund whereby uh, if there's any fallback position, it does not uh, hurt your family, okay? Right? Now, these are some examples. I'll just run through with you what we did, right? So this is one of my customers and this has was achieved in less than a year, okay? Uh, Can we shield residences? Uh, they purchased this property. It's a two-bit, two-bar for a 1726 per square feet. The latest transactions today is at 1862, putting them at estimated paper gains of 106. The next property they did invest in was Penrose. For a three-bit, two-bar, they bought it at 1470. The latest transaction today is at 1674. Therefore, the estimated gain is about $195,000. So the total gains basically in less than a year, paper gains is about $300,000. Next one, okay, besides planning for your for your for wealth, I also do retirement planning. Right. So this family came to me and says they didn't know what to do. Uh, uh, they're concerned about retirement. Uh, they, they are sick of their job, they're already in their 60s, yet they don't know how to maneuver. Right. Um, all these examples, guys. Uh, if you're in my email system, you have already read all these examples. I've given you the full details, and this is just a summary, right? We saw all the landed property. This is a leasehold property. Yes, they made, made money because they bought in the earlier days. They sold their condominium. Now, this condominium was a bit interesting because we wanted to change it to the son's name. But unfortunately, the son is uh, just hit 21, not working yet. Therefore, leverage was an issue bank loan cannot get. Okay, right? So what they did was that they sold these two properties and bought an executive, executive mansion with more than $1, one million in cash to retire with. Now, they're going to wait for about two or three years when the son starts to work, get some money and use that money to start off his property investment. So awesome, right? The next one. This is very, very fresh, all right? Um, I sent this uh, email out, I think, a couple of days ago. I can't remember. So for this particular customer, basically, the as you mentioned, that is still haven't complete yet. It's, it's just so they're waiting for the appointments to complete. But they've already purchased Momentum Tuck, a three bedroom at 1770, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. All right, and then, and then of course, there's so many more, right? So all of them has gone through these three, these, these five pillars, and whereby um, their family, in terms of cash flow, is safe, all right? Uh, if they're renting a place, it's also catered for already. Now, on to private updates, huh? All right, this is interesting for private updates. Uh, unfortunately, I could not get the chart that just tells you residential. So I have this tree that is actually gotten up from the URA. Um, residential property has climbed up really high. All right, the whole reason of 0 .0 0 0.8 because this is private residential, right? Private residential, it actually consists of landed and private. Okay, the reason why it's 0 0.8 is because landed dropped by 0.3%. But the actual non-landed condominiums actually went up, or non-landed properties went up by 1.1%. And if in my group already in partial property, you would know that uh, I think early last year during the, the during the CV, I was asking all of you to not buy any office spaces because of the confirmed change in terms of the MNCs. Huh? And therefore you can see the office spaces has come down and so has the retail spaces. Unfortunately, the retail spaces is not really real because again, it's a mixture of leasehold and freehold. The freehold that I'm looking at has all gone up. Okay, so I've, I've been I've been outpriced already for that for that property. Now the next one I'm going to show you the change here is that this is the gray one you see here is basically the non land the landed property drop and then the non landed property going up. Now. This data is pulled back all the way from 1997, all right? It tells you the entire Singapore data. It gives you a general guideline, all right? Obviously, when you're going to buy into an area, we can do an area search, of, all right? You cannot use uh, other parts of Singapore as, as a comparison. But you can see that from 1999 all the way, and especially back in 07 to perhaps 2010, if you're in the market, okay, guys, I was still a very new agent at the time, right? So all of this I learned later, but you folks, if you are already much older than me and you see for the first time between this timeline, right? Landed properties are transiting lower than condominiums. It's a no-brainer, right? Just buy any landed property, okay? It does not make sense. How can a landed property be cheaper than a 
condominium. Right? It doesn't make sense. So that was a price index. And if anybody bought during this period of time, we have made very good returns because after that, you see the sheer, uh, 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 what do you call that, uh, uh, displacement of price, I would say, was shown after 2010 where the blended short, short all the way up. All right. And then now you will maintain that price gap. Okay. So if you're a Singaporean today and yeah, aiming to buy a landed property, you should have gone for it, right? This would have been a good price uh, as an indication as well. So you can look back into this as a guide and then go into area search and look at the guide again. Okay. This tells you basically how are the non landed properties performing in the three different areas. All right. I'm assuming all of you will know what is OCR, RCR, and CCR. Okay. Just as a quick summary OCR basically is outside central region. It is your outskirts of Singapore, Woodlands, Jurong, Tampines, Simei, all these places. RCR is like the place where I live in, right? Uh, Budley Ridge area, uh, Waskell area, uh, uh, Bishan area. These are called the rest of uh, Central Region. And the CCR will be your Marina area, your Orchard Road area, Novena area, all right? Now, over the years, this is, an, this is the breakdown. Huh? From 2018 to 19, there's an increase of 4.2, 3.2, 1.1, and 1.9%, all right? The OCR properties has increased a lot. And that makes a lot of sense because the OCR properties has the lowest quantum. Does it make sense? Right? But there has been a lot of um, movement in the in the in the RCR area. Because sometimes I think for families, they do not want to stay really too far away, but yet they want to stay nearer. But yet in the CCR area, it's a bit too pricey, pricey, right? So they buy somewhere near the city fringes. And this has also gone up very well. Yep. Uh, for this year itself. RCR first quarter has already overtook 2020 growth, right? This is the same, two, it's more than one, two, three percent. This is three percent, right? So if you're looking for a resale property in a CCR area, if you have the budget and the quantum, I think it's something you can consider because it didn't really move that much, right? Okay, so this is just um, for you to understand what are the inventories like in Singapore. This inventory, the pipeline supply, would actually mean properties that hasn't taken on a key. So I just wanted to know the movement of the units based on the pandemic, right? The, so the delays and so forth will be affected in over here. So some things to note was that beyond 2024, there used to be no, no much units at the end of 2019, right? A lot of units are completing in 22 and 23, okay? As of end of 2020, you can see there's been spill over to beyond 2024, and there has been a slight dip in the 2023 and 2024 units. Yeah. And our first half of 2021, let's see. 2021, right now, when you look at these figures, you realize that if any one of us are looking for a property brand new in future, any buyers, anything from 2025 onwards, we do not have supply. Make sense? Because this was released from first half of 2021, all right? Now, this is something it's important for us to understand yeah? and to, to remember. Now, if you've seen my videos in the past, I've done this chart before and I always use 2016 as a gauge, right? These total inventories are basically units that has not TOP yet. So whatever that you see here, right, over here, okay, is actually inside here. They haven't got a key. So inside this, a uh, bar chart will give you uh, properties that is still building, uh, properties that is sold and unsold. Uh, this is basically the summary of it, all right? So as of end of 2021, quarter two, we are looking at 47,000 units, all right? The orange one will basically new supply that has been introduced into the market, all right? So you can see in 2017, we have 36,000 after we have sold quite a few units from 40,000. Uh, end of 2016. End of 2017, for that year, they closed quite a few units. And then in 19, uh, uh, and released some units, they introduced another 19,900 units into the market. And therefore, in 2018, this, this blue color bar shot up. Okay. For this year, they actually had some changes in the reserve land and the GLS. And therefore, they bumped up the supply by 6,700 6, for the second quarter of this year. Yeah. This chart gives you an overall understanding of what has been unsold in the market for new launches, 
all right, and what has been sold in the market, right? Unsold and sold. Now let's look at the ones that is sold. For 2016, the whole year they did 7,900 in one seven is 10,000 and then you can read it off as such, all right? Uh, this was very important for us to look at uh, last year because it was a pandemic year, right? A lot of us were actually waiting for the market to drop, okay? But it bounced back, in fact, and in 2020, we actually did more units compared to 2019, all right? In 2021, first quarter, we did close to 3.5. Second quarter, we did close to 3. Basically, we have already done about 6,500, meaning to say that this year, I anticipate the minimum we were going to hit Right when you throw in past risk eight units, uh, we are going to hit in excess of 10,000 back in 2017. Now, this is a rise of concern because in 2016, when we had an outstanding of 19,000 units, moving on to 2017, right? I think the big side will be clearer. Moving on to 27 and 18,891, this year, if you can remember correctly, was a whole year of GLS and a lot of on block. All right, that's why there was a huge spike of 19,900 units. And then the following year, another spike of 9,800. There was a little bit of slowdown when they introduced the new badges back in July 2018. All right, and after that, it's been quiet. But every year, units have been taken off, right? So now, end of second quarter this year, we're left with 19,000. We are back basically, guys, to 2016 and inventories. So a few things are going to happen. Huh? On block is going to start. All right. Second, if the government doesn't increase their land bank and sell more units to the uh, to the developers, okay, we are going to face to face with the balance nineteen thousand units. Every single developer, because today the demand is much higher than the supply. Every developer, if you are a developer, what will you do? you will increase the price, okay? Because there is no, uh, there is too much demand. Exactly what happened in past week's eight, am I right? Okay, you guys have received the news. Uh, throughout the day of uh, launch, they adjusted the price, I think, six times. And the last one was, was just, to me, I think it was a bit ridiculous, uh, selling at 2,000 plus per square feet for a unit, okay? I had customers calling me and say, Wow, this one can sell at 2,000 by units in this area. How can I not even press 1,000 feet? All right. But anyway, this is, I think, it's just uh, uh, something that I think we just see at the surface. All right. I, I have a feeling that the two buyers that bought this unit will not exercise and they will forfeit, okay? Because it doesn't make sense. All right. I think you are too ego and they have pride. They just want a unit. Okay? But I already, okay, I can't comment much. So anyway, I think this is what's going to happen and you should really uh, uh, be very concerned about it because uh, all signs are moving towards that. Price are going up. Yep. Okay. So the, I'm going to conclude this very quickly. Is, is that I feel that based on this increase of the new launches, all right, uh, can you just imagine um, a million dollars today can get you perhaps a 600 plus to a 700 square feet property, brand new property. So unless you're willing to buy a 20 year old property or a property which is an older property in not such a good area, right? We will lose our choice of owning a private, uh, private um, condominium. The reason is because our income cannot catch up and we are priced up. But the thing, excuse me, the thing is that not just our income, but there are another group of people whose income has caught up with the market and they are able to afford, all right? And therefore, for us to participate in this is to first lose, personally, I feel, our old mindset. The old mindset is that same as a HGB dollars. Huh? Because the family is expanding, they'll think to themselves, I'm going to buy a property for own stay and therefore, I have to buy a HDB because a condominium is too small, all right? But the thing is that the examples that you've seen earlier, right, those customers of mine are renting a place because they started to understand when I introduced them this term called COH, right, cost of housing. When you understand that, you know that the new plan that is needed now for all of us in Singapore is to rent where you stay and buy where you invest, all right? Put your capital uh, to good use, right? And over here, I say uh, prioritize your seed capital. 
Once you put your C capital, a lot of us are only able to get such a C capital because we have the CPF platform to help us to have forced savings right, and getting a very good return in terms of interest. This is our startup for our first property. Yet we put a lot of our, our seed capital in the properties that doesn't appreciate and we get stuck for the longest time. If to just imagine today, if we didn't have CPF, a lot of us would be homeless, all right? Okay, I see whether you all agree with me. It is what I think it is. Right? So again, there's a possible on-block market action, and there's going to be possible um on, possible new cooling measures. Now I did a new cooling measures possibility, I think, earlier this year. And I stand by my, what, what I said. But I have added on a few little things right, over some discussion with my, my team. I have a very strong feeling, and I think um, that LTV will drop to 70% because it does make sense for the longer term in terms of Singapore, right? We need to reduce the debt uh, for families. So in future, we can only borrow 70%. Now, this is just my own opinion, right? Second thing I think they're going to do is that they're going to have a lot of ECs to cater for the sandwich class. Those that have always been trying so many times to get a BTO, they can't get a BTO. And when they get the EC, with the new EC land cost, right, from the developers, a lot of them will be priced out of owning an EC because based on a $14,000 cap per Per family, you realize that at the desired property they're gonna buy in the EC, they cannot even they're not even eligible for seventy five percent because or they're using MSR on the base on the bank assessment. Therefore, I felt that for the EC class, they should be introducing a new uh, MSR or a new TDSR. The TDSR will remain at sixty percent, but we have a sixty percent TDSR with MSR at thirty percent. I think for the ECs, they will do two things: they will introduce a forty five percent for the loan. So they're able to have the leverage, okay? And then the next thing I think they'll do is to increase from fourteen to sixteen thousand dollars, or even higher. So they're able to assist this group of sandwich uh, 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 families, okay? Sandwich class families. Um, I also been asking around, and personally, I do not see any external factors to bring the Singapore real estate market downwards. Uh, the last time it happened was based on the subprime, right? The subprime was back in 08. Um, after that, one tree was domestic, was, uh, sorry, domestic policies, Singapore policies that brought the market down. The next external factors to me was actually last year based on a pandemic. But the thing, the reverse happened, right? We have done very well as a nation, as a country, and foreigners are putting more money into our island, okay? And therefore, with that, property prices are just going upwards, okay? So you guys, if you are in the perspective and mindset that property prices will drop, please share your, your comment, all right? Put in the chat so we're able to also learn because as of now, I'm unable to see any external factors or the only factors I think it will happen is internal factors, which is a new cooling measures, all right? And um, yeah, I think it's going to be just get more expensive, all right? Now, moving on, are discounts worth it? Okay, this is exciting, eh? right? So um, I'm going to share you some things in terms of a general uh, a general um, surface because there are some things I can really comment too much on a webinar, public webinar like that because uh, I'm still a salesperson in Portman, right? Okay, so now moving on. This is something that but I feel that as a, your friend who's a salesperson who, or anyone Right, who have reached you, reached out to you. I think everyone except me telling you that hey, this is just crazy. Okay, one pearl bank in front of two MRT stations. Okay, Orchard Park, uh, Brown Line, and then uh, the present Green Line. They have discounts, unbelievable savings of up to five hundred and thirty-one thousand dollars. Okay, all of us should know this. This is a very uh, a prominent uh, property that was unblocked by CDL. Okay, and they will have sent you this message whereby you will see a two bedroom, right? Uh, 2405 or 700 square feet. And this is actually uh, this is actually a two bed, one bath, right? Used to lease for 1.95 million, now going for only 1.75 million with a savings of $206,000. We go on to the three bedroom savings of 388K or even 426K and another unit going for $531,000 savings. Now, 
I'm going to give you a story, write a story for you to just analyze and think for yourself. Is this if today your cost of your of something is a hundred dollars and you are selling it for hundred and fifty dollars, right? At hundred and fifty dollars, if it doesn't move, okay, would you sell it at hundred and thirty dollars? You would, isn't it? Now, what do I what do I mean? When we see such advertisements, all right, um, you are a consumer buying for investment. But so before you 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 want to invest in something that makes sense, where you put your yourself into the shoes of the developer, all right? You have to understand that there's a lot of strategies at the hands and the disposal of the developers that, if not explained to you or if you didn't try to think further, you have been sold that, hey, this makes sense. This property, this discount, wow, today I'm able to, to, to actually buy a higher floor unit at a cheaper price than the lower floor. Now, why does this happen? It's because the first strategy you can, you can actually do is that when they launch a property, any units from 20th floor to the top floor, they can price it really high. That is really silly at that point in time for you to even consider buying. And this direction by the developer would then have us saying that, then of course it doesn't make sense to pay three, four hundred thousand dollars for a higher floor, you will buy the lower floor first. Make sense? And when the lower floor moves, and now you're left with so many higher floors, when you do this strategy, guess what? People now say, hey, it makes sense. I'm buying a higher floor at a cheaper price, I'm now stuck. Right? Okay? Now, uh, I'm going to show you something else. And then you ask yourself, what is your risk? And unless you're buying for your own home, I think, and you have, and then you are willing to put your money in, then I think you are safe to buy. But personally, even though uh, it's my own home, uh, I won't buy <laughs> because I will know what was the cost unless I'm paying off in cash. Okay? Now, I will actually do it another way. And one thing is that I will bring on you, bring all you back to the fundamentals, all right? And that is to understand the broader market support, okay? Let me just do it at a timer. It's 837. So before going into the micro, micro means a project, all right? I want you to go up to the top view and see the macro, which is called the broader market support. Now, what is the broader market support? The broader market support is this. Let's take a look. Huh? This is the uh, top view of the street directory of Chinatown area, right? The landmark, which is behind one per bank, is going at an average cost of 2157 per square feet selling price. One per bank is going for about 2451. On the left, you have Avenue South, all right, 2145 per square feet. Down south near the Cantonment Future MRT station is Sky Everton, 2713 per square feet. All right, Sky Everton is not only balanced with the four bedrooms and to the six, six bedrooms. Uh, this is a freehold property, the rest are all leasehold. One Burnham is at uh, this uh, Prince Edward area, right? They did an average of 2510 per square feet. This is a plot of land. And finally, we have Marina View. This is the new um, land, a white site that was actually placed on reserve, but then it came into the market because it was triggered by a developer. And this is the this is a plot of land over here. We don't know what is this, this per square feet, right? So what I'm doing here is basically to tell you what is going to be the options available for buyers in the future. Your exit strategy, okay? If we go back, go towards the west side a little bit, right? Uh, southwest, you will hit the Tolbranga and the Labr Labrador Park. Now, this area is interesting because end of this year, they release the keys and, and, and by next year, I think some sort of works are going to happen. So this has been the biggest debate. I think almost every video I talk about this because this is going to house altogether 9,000 units of which is, has also HDBs inside, right? The reef at Keppel, this is the last plot of land nearest to uh, Vivo City and Harbourfront, right? Has sold an average price of 2305 per square feet. Over here near Pasir Panjang, Cambridge Hill Residences is doing an average of 1822 per square feet. All right. Next, if you blow this up, you're near Queensway area and one north area, all right. Red Hill area in 2017, if you bought this place, you have made money. It's, you know, people are already selling it in the sub-sale. They have already passed the three years. They're doing an average of 1922 per square feet, right? 
study residences, they're also going to get their keys in the next couple of months, all right? Uh, and I think they also make good money for study residences. Then you have Nomentum Park going at an average of 1775 per square feet. One North Eden, very small project, 165 units, 1992 per square feet. And finally, by September, we should get the news of, oops, we should get the news of barracks one and two, right? Uh, here, basically, we will get the news by September, because right now it's under tender, right? Now, if I were to lump all these projects, because these are all new projects, huh? I think it's a matter of difference of one or two years of, of uh, a TOP period. You can see, rising high is Sky Everton, right? The main difference for Sky Everton will be fuel property, that's all. Near the MRD station, Doing, going about 2713 per square feet. Next, you have one Burnham, 2510, one Pearl Bank, the Reef, the Landmark, Avenue South, Sterling, one North Eden, and Atra. All right, Atra, of course, has been in the market for a while already. It's considered a slightly older pro project, right? Cambridge Shield Residences and Momentum Park. This is the two unknown, all right? But this one is going to hit 2000 plus, definitely. Here, I'm also quite confident. Later, you will know why. Now, let me ask you something. If today, with all these TOPs, huh, today you can consider buying one burner, Sky Everton, because you like the location, it's really good, it's very hyped up, right? The question is that, how are you going to exit? Is the risk of the price correcting, right, downwards higher, or is the price going to appreciate, the chance of it going up is higher? And compared to if you're doing this as an investment, the difference between Sky Everton the highest, and here, it's close to a thousand per square feet. If you compare Nomentum Park and One Pearl Bank, you're talking about seven hundred dollars per square feet difference, All right? So the difference is uh, what, what One Burnham, One Burnham and uh, Nomentum Park difference is seven hundred thirty-five per square feet, All right? So the question you have asked yourself is that: Can the broader market support this price? Or you are the forefront in terms of price. You got to you got to be the one. You and your project and your friends are huh, have to be the one to break all new time highs. All right, okay. For me, I like to buy properties over here, whereby I don't need to break all time high. I just follow it because the chance of my property going down in price does not make sense. All right. Even if it does, it's so little. And the chance of it going up is enormous. All right? So this is how we do a hedge against property prices. All right? And moreover, can we shield residences and Nomenum Park? A lot of, of people will say that it's at the Nyapu Santan Motifa. It's very inconvenient and so forth. Okay? But my question to you is this. This is not a small land parcel. Right? It is in a good area also. It has other attributes that other other condiments does not have. One Burnham going at 2510 is right at the CBD area, okay, but it's a very small land plot with very few units, okay. One of Eden is the same. So if you check out, ask yourself, especially now in this pandemic, uh, to be honest, everyone wants to have a bit of, of facilities, all right. And I tell you, in the resale market today, small condominiums are going to suffer selling because not much amenities, all right. So I hope this will answer a question on how you should uh, use broader market as your risk assessment. Okay? okay you're making good time, huh? Planning forward. All right. So guys, this are basically what has been done already in the market. All right. This is awarded. This is near this uh, Ferrer Park. Okay. Ferrer Park's here. This land bid is at 1129 per square feet. Whatever that you see here, basically, when they are actually given the, 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 the land for the developer, the launch will be a year later, okay? Normally, it's after 12, 12 months. So whatever that you see here is all going to sell next year. And what is the sale? I'm going to throw in an estimated $600 per square feet based on the construction cost, the interest cost, or the other costs that the developer has to absorb. All right, and therefore, based on a 15% profit margin, we are looking at a $2,000 per square feet for this area. Yeah. The next one is Amokyo. This is the near Mayflower area. Right? This is the OCR. This was also done in June at 
118 per square feet, break even, and I estimate the selling price would be around $2,000 per square feet. So can you see that the prices are just increasing and creating all new benchmark prices? Yep. This is interesting. This is a lentil area. Lentil area, your brown line, I think, will only be really somewhere uh, 2025 to 2029, thereabouts, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So this place has a land bid of 1204 OCR area. Okay. Um, selling price should be about 2050. This is a mixed development, mixed commercial. Ground floor has about 8,000 square meter of commercial space on the first level. Right. Here we have. It will have an estimated of hmm, it's not, uh, 605 units on this side. Now, this has already been, been done, but you see these two plots of land. So this is something for you to, to, to watch out for. These two plots of land, just beside it also near the Lentor MRT station, at 595, this plot of land, parcel A, will be up for tender in 2021 September, meaning to say that the result should be announced by December, normally about three months. Okay. This is under the confirmed, the confirmed land sales. And this plot of land, which is parcel B, is under the reserve land sale. Now, why am I showing you this? If you can think back during the launch of Twinview and Whistler Grand, all right? And you can think back, why is it that at the time I was so excited about um, Penrose, all right? It's because Penrose at the time when they bid it for the land was at a low time. All right, it was at a low time, the developer got the land, they were selling properties and units, a brand new unit, cheaper than Sims Urban Oasis in the resale market. So that was a no-brainer. It was an arbitrage position you could take. The chance of you making money is very high. All right. So here you could have the same because if you think back during Twin View and Whistler Grand, right? Their launch was a difference of six months, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Twin View was crazy, it was also hype up, the price kept going up. When Whistler Grand was launched, what did the developer do, All right? CDL changed and reversed the entire, uh, the entire uh, strategy. They sold the first, I think, 200 over units almost at cost price, all right? And because of that, people who had, would buy Risa uh, Grand at the time because Twinview was selling at a higher price. It doesn't make sense to get my Twinview, so they buy the Risa Grand. And when they're left with the last 100 ton units, the price steadily increased, and that's where they make their profits back. Okay, and this could happen if if sentiment in the market kind of soften in the next few months. If there's new measures, it will definitely create a little bit of ripple. But I don't think it will be a lot because the last announcement it happened uh, back in 2018, whereby they reduced the LTV and they increased the the, the ABSD market credit less than one percent. Okay, so I'm not so sure, but if we look out, this could be a quite an interesting part of land for you to, to take a look. Yep. Next one will be, ah, this is the um, since Direct's rise, right? This is where one north is. This is parcel A, parcel B, they were both launched together at um, and tender close 28 September. Now, so I have my customers who bought, you know that I've been crazy over Nomentum, uh, Nomentum Park. So a lot of us are buying the property. They're asking, how is this still going to affect? And I said, it's not much, don't worry, because the units here are really, really, really small, all right? This is at 265, this is 140, 165. It's not going to affect drastically in terms of the demand for, non for non mental Park in the future. Okay. Marina View, this is a new one that was triggered for sale just in front of the uh, Shenton Way. This one, the minimum land bid is 1378. What do I mean? Well, this was the trigger price of 1.05 billion, if I remember correctly. Right. Uh, therefore, developers have to bid anything from that amount. So we anticipate this one might creep up to about 1,006 to 1,007 per square feet now. If this unit closes at 1,6 plus minus per square feet, all right, the cost of this property is going to be the same as one per bank. One per bank land cost about 1,550, all right? And if this developer at a time would sell at about the same price, okay, one problem was going to be hit very hard. Okay, already there's some challenge. Huh? A two bedroom you saw earlier going at 1.75 million, right? If you go over the CCR, which is over at, at uh, uh, um, Midtown Modern, a Midtown Modern 
635 square feet unit only sold at 1.5 plus million dollars, right? So this is going to be uh, the competitors that you will face when you put your property up for sale in future. So please look at the broader market, right? This is amazing, okay? East Coast guys staying there, you love this place, Katong area. Uh, this land is owned by URA. I think you've been renting out to a company. It's Katong Student Hostel. It's just beside Head Court, right? This place had housed a total of 645 units. Estimated launch date again is this year, September 2021. You get a you will get the results end of this year, and then the sale end of next year. Now, if this one goes up, Ember Park is going to look very cheap. Okay. If this interest goes up, we are in for a very, very strong bull run this year. All right. And therefore, I think um, the chances of cooling managers might come in. Okay, I'm just speculating, right? Okay, but this is dairy farm. Um, personally, I don't really like this area. Yeah, I'm being a bit emotional, but this place really quite far off. Many properties in this area. Uh, the new ones has not really performed very well. Um, I know that there are properties for sale at dairy farm residences today. It's a mixed commercial property. But personally, I think with the same amount of money at 1,500 per square feet, you can consider other places that will make more sense and give you that higher capital growth, okay? Right, now, the next slide is interesting because uh, I edited this this morning because I received this yesterday, all right? This was from a company. Now, look at this. Yesterday, I screenshot, right? What does this say? It just says that following a week of new record price for both government land sales and a close to 90% sold uh, seller of Pasir Ris 8, okay, with a record per square feet of over $2,000, this happened yesterday. If you're looking for key residences, it has gone up by 4%. Coastline has gone up. Normandan Park has also gone up. In fact, the demand for two bedroom is very high. There's very few now. It's just gone up 2% plus 5,000, all right? That's why uh, 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 Benning here, one of the panelists, quickly ask his client to buy the property before the price hike, all right? The rest has increased by $5,000. Good news for my customer that bought Penrose. Developers again increased by another 2%, all right? The Florence residences. And the rest of the properties you see here, Affinity and Terras, Verdale, all the other properties are also going to increase price. Why? Again, it goes back to the, to the private market updates I showed you earlier. There is not enough supply and the demand is high. Okay. Therefore, same thing. I don't see any external factors, like I said, that will bring the market down. All right. And if you haven't started and you have been delaying, all right, that is why today my password is take action, right? But <laughs> take, um, take calculated risk action, I don't anyhow, right? Okay. To start to restructure your portfolio today. Okay. Uh, I've gone through with you the possible new pulling measures already. I think there might be one to watch out for, which I think will be very good is that uh, moving forward is that they might put a, a cap to our CPF. To be honest, to cool the measures, the introduction of ABSD is not going to help, all right? The foreigners has already uh, uh, affected that in the purchase and they're still buying properties in Singapore. Um, I think what they could look into, honestly, my own personal belief is that they should look into the usage of CPF for mortgage per payment, not for down payment. For down payment, you can use all. But I think those who are making income of between $3,000, $4,000 to $6,000, this is where the CPF contribution is, right? They might force us to um, keep aside $500 inside, which you cannot touch, okay? And then the rest you can use for your mortgage payment so that now people will feel the pain, right? That now I am so used to using CPF, now I need to use cash. I will then, then be a bit more smarter and prudent in my property selection, right? So I think that will make more sense rather than the introduction of more ABS here. But then, then this is just my thoughts. Huh? And personally, my take is that it is very good for everyone to have some money in the CPF to earn a good interest, okay? And that can also double as a crisis fund, okay? And easier for you to make the move the next time. If you follow all my other videos, you'll understand why uh, cash usage is better than CPF, right? Again, I recommend you to go for the new plan, rent where you stay and buy where you invest, right? And look for growth projects, right? Um, some strategies, I will show you later, some strategies um, is not a copy and paste to all districts at all property type, 
All right. In some places, we go for three bedrooms. In some places, we go for one bedroom. And it's also very different depending on the circumstance that you're in today, the age you're at today, and what type of uh, 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 um, uh, objective you have for your purchase. So please do not confuse yourself when I share this with you and you just copy and paste the whole of Singapore and you say Devon Teach one, okay? It's not like that, right? Okay. So uh, in a short term hedge is to use a real estate hack too, uh, and that is to do co-living, right? To maximize your returns now. Right now, a lot of us will be asking, right? How then to look for growth projects? All right? Okay, definitely I will have a bit of overtime. I hope you guys don't mind, right? So I'll just speed up a little bit more. To find growth projects, is you have to find number one, a large price gap between the new launch properties and the old condos, but are freehold properties. Okay? There is a price gap also in this area between a freehold landed and the old freehold condominium because they're upgrading for space. Now, these are what I call the sandwich buyers, all right? The sandwich buyers, not for the HDB side, but for the private side whereby they wish to get a bigger space, okay? Oh, um, EZN, yes, EZN, she raised her hand. Do you have a question? Ben help me. Yeah. Okay, so please raise your hand if it's urgent, you want to interrupt, and then I will stop, I will ask and try to answer the question. If not, please put it in the Q&A, all right, and then we'll answer and collect everything and do the Q&A session in a short while. Yeah. So while Ben is assisting me here, let me just go through again, right? These are the service buyers who want to buy a bigger space, right? They made some money from their sale of the property or they're in a more affluent income bracket, but they cannot afford a lender property. Yet at the same time, the condos are too small. All right. They will go for these old freehold properties. All right. Then next, we look also at a potential price increase based on future area infrastructure to boost the growth. Right. And this is for younger projects. This one will have a higher time frame between five to eight years. Okay. So uh, basically, what I'm trying to say is that not just, not, you do not need to only just buy a new large property to make money. You can also buy the old properties, but then there is a way for you to look at such a property, okay? Now, um, so I mean, okay, people ask me, why is it all my examples in the East? Because I'm an Easterner for the longest time, all right? I've been doing private property sale and resale HDB all in this East Coast area, okay? So that's why I'm more familiar over here. Now, if you know where is Flamingo Valley, right? Uh, this is Park East, okay? I want to bring your attention here to the cemetery, all right? So everyone say you cannot buy a property that is a cemetery, but guess what? All these properties make a lot of money, right? So don't be pang tang, right? This is uh, where Jalan Kuakong is, right? Uh, those who frequent this area, you will know that there is a, a, a coffee shop here, a coffee shop here at NTUC around here. Oh, yeah, yeah, here, here, I think, I think so. Shell Station, uh, over here. All right, there is a Starbucks on this area. So this place is quite, it's quite nice. You have Mandarin, okay? And now, if you go, this is up north. Huh? If you go down south, you will see Mandarin Gardens. This is the old property, big land. Laguna Park, these two are what? Leasehold properties, all right? And then you have a brand new property here called Seaside Residences, all right? And opposite, of course, you have a very beautiful East Coast Park area, okay? Now, let's take a look at some of the numbers. Let me bring you back to 2017. In 2017, when you're looking for a property here, you, get, you guys, because of PDPA, I'm unable to do this sharing with all the unit numbers. I only do that on a one on one. Okay. Um, so these are terraces. Ignore the strata. These areas are so for strata. Strata are basically cluster houses, which I don't like to go into it. We go to land. This is an elite terrace done in 12th of May. This was so then it was about 1711, so at 2.3 million. I think this one could be a very old house, single story, because I think the price gap is really different. Okay. Right. So uh, this is my guess. I'm not so sure. I'm just guessing. Okay. And then at this time in 17 October, again, this inter terrace is sold at 2.8 million. And today, uh, old inter terrace in this area, just done in June 21, uh, 2021. At 2.98, close to 3 million already. Now, these buyers, when they come into these properties, they are priced up from the land property. 
Because when you want to rebuild a property, do A and A, renovate, it's very expensive. All right, it will take you about four hundred to six hundred thousand dollars, depending on what you want to do. If it's an old property like a two point three, you add on another level. All right, one level is between four to five hundred k already. So this is expensive for landed properties, yeah. And when you take a look at seaside residences. You realize that in in one seven, oops, in one seven, all right. These are the five nine two are the one one bedroom plus study going at one seven per square feet. The bigger units one oh two three agree for one six one point six uh, k per square feet, all right. And this you realize the characteristics of all these new launches, right? Ah,、uh, it has very high per square feet and very small space. And therefore, these semi buyers will not buy these places. Yet they want to stay in this area, okay? And then they 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 are the type that they are、uh, cannot afford a landed property. Yet they want to buy for own stay because they do not believe in renting a place, right? So what do they do? They buy Park East. Park East at Jalan Tua Kong, two zero one seven. Can you see the price gap? One o five o. Compared to one seven one six, it was a five hundred dollars per square feet. Yet at the same time, they could get something even cheaper. Actually, they can go to Mandarin Garden, they can go to Laguna Park, the whole stretch a lot of leasehold properties. But they why they scared because leasehold. I want freehold. Make sense? An old property is better buy a, a, a freehold property. And I want a large livable space, big landscape. Okay, uh, Park East has about uh three hundred or five thousand. Square feet of land. It's quite a big plot of land, and two hundred over units only. All right. The entry price at the time they bought in one seven was one point seven two nine million. Can you see the difference? One point seven two nine and two point three to two point eight. It's a vast difference, right? And today in May this year they sold it for two point three seven million, giving them a profit of six hundred forty thousand dollars. All right. Now, is this amazing? I think it's amazing. Look at the second row. Ah.、Uh. This person one six nine zero bought the property in oh seven. He had to wait fourteen years. Okay, fourteen years. Fourteen、right? years to make one point three seven million. This person waited only three years. Is it three years? Nine eight eight nine ten four years to make six hundred forty k. Okay, so this is how you are able to narrow down. All right, to find a property that makes sense to you in the long term and to also make capital gains. Okay. All right, all right. So now we got the Q and A. Okay, guys, feel free、um, to go ahead to ask me the Q A and A. I'm going to leave this on my last slide. All right. For those of you who has not、uh, met me yet before and gone a one on one uh, uh, investment consultation and you're looking to understand more and know how to expand on your portfolio, you can reach me at fasttrack.sg. This is uh um at fashion.sg. You're able to fill some of your particulars, so at least I have some information before I speak to you. But if you're in a hurry and want to speak to me almost immediately, you can WhatsApp or text me directly. And this is my personal mobile number. Yeah. Christine, ah, okay, ah,、uh, Christine, yes, ah,、uh, is right. Okay, um, growth projects. We have to look at the different areas. There's another growth project that I think is quite safe, and this would be ah.、Uh, okay, you realize that earlier at Park East, right? It actually goes against my normal inverse funnel. Okay, my normal inverse funnel. Ah,、uh, the normal inverse funnel I will actually do will be um. Let me just close this, ah.、Uh. Let me just stop. I just leave it here. The normal inverse funnel that I normally、uh, do is to see what is the price of the first owner until now, and then if it's too high, then to me it's very risky. Okay, but this is a bit different because the targeted audience or your buyers are are different, right? That's why you buy the area. Okay. Ah,、uh, some one of the things that I'm actually looking at with my customers. Okay, when I say this, you are going to be a bit turned off because when I speak to my <laughs> to my salesperson friend, you're like, whatever, cannot buy one now, okay? But、uh, this is I'm catering this to one of my customers who's a PR, and because they are buying in already with an additional five percent ABSD, I'm looking at Pondo area, 
flow residences. Okay, flow residences, F L O, right? Okay, so uh, again, it depends for them. They are looking for uh, own stay plus uh, investing. They want to make sure that at least whatever they buy is going to grow in the coming years. And therefore, I have a whole different type of uh, uh, metrics for me to to analyze. So, guys, uh, some of you I've met before already. At times, I take a while to get back to you because me and my team we are deep in doing research. Okay, therefore, I do not just tell you, oh, this can buy. Not the issue, all right? Yeah. Please show the site with property with PSF, please. Thank you. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, let me just uh, escape. Oops, let me just escape this. Um, okay, you are looking at this. Okay, yep. Yep. Um, oops. Wei Hong. Yes, um, Wei Hong, is this the one you're, you're asking for? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, is there any question you want to ask me about this chart? Okay, guys, this, <laughs> this whole ladder of prices is computed based on the average per square feet. I go back from each property, okay? I didn't, I'm not so hard working. I can pay every single one and, and divide, right? Yeah, so this, 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 this is it. What is the price range of all freehold condos in CCR? Okay, so CCR uh, for William, right? Uh, CCR, honestly, uh, if you're going to buy something, right, uh, you go to buy near River Valley area, right? Uh, this area, I personally like it a lot because it's for own state. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you to buy uh, a two bedroom. I recommend you to get at least a three bedroom in River, River Valley. Uh, if you're looking in terms of uh, very good passive income, uh, freehold uh, in, in the area, you are not bothered about the, the, the capital appreciation, right? You can look at those properties which is actually near the MRD station. Okay? Yeah. But what are those prices? I also do not know now. I got to research. <laughs> I can't tell you the answer offhand. But I know that previously I was looking at it. We had places at, at Espada, we had at River Valley, I have one called at Laurels, right? Laurels. Uh, Laurels is actually just behind. Behind. And it's, 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 at, it's at, at the foot of Cane Hill. Which shopping center is that? Ah, uh? uh, Paragon. Wait. Paragon Homian. Behind Paragon. That one. Today, I think if you buy, you're buying the same price as the new launch when they bought at the time. Okay, so this was one of the study that I actually uh, shared with some of you the last time about looking at broader market and why is it that after so many years, this property is not performing, okay? Right, it's because of broader market support. Yeah. scenario. Okay, so uh, Elix has a question. She's asking, uh, Hi, Darren, how do you see a drop of condo rental as SG is reopening its borders since uh, this round of rental increase is mainly caused by Malaysians who are unable to cross border commuting? All right, so uh, I seriously, um, now I do not see a drop in condo rental. I think there is an increase of condo rental because um, not only are people now buying uh, the BTOs, they are looking for family planning and staying in the same household is disrupting their, their personal space. And therefore, we are actually looking at uh, uh, Singaporeans moving out and renting a space, right? And we also have those people that uh, bought a new launch property. They're actually capitalizing on the HGB price today to sell at a high price and they're renting outside. So I think in the short term, uh, even though for, for, uh, um, for my co-living properties, uh, the rental is moving very fast, even for one bedroom. Uh, when I'm doing portfolio restructuring for my customers and they're renting a space outside, we had to fight for the unit, right? So um, right now, I do not think that property is, that the rental price is going to come down in the, in, in, at least in the next one or two years, right? And even if they would open up, to be honest, if they open up, 
I do not see a drop in in uh, rental. I think more people will be coming in. And then finally, we are able to to beef up on, on our employment, right? Yeah. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Okay, Wei Hong, where key residence sits in this ladder? Any idea? Okay, key residences are... Uh, Key residence is good for own state. Okay, key residences is really a particular flavor for 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 anyone because it's really um it's really on its own, correct? Um, if you really like a place and you do not intend to profit from it from it, you're looking to stay for the long term. Okay, under a triple nine property, I think it's okay. Yeah, if you really want to. Mm. Yep, but if you're asking me for the same budget. Is there any other alternative? Uh, you know me, like, there's always alternative. <laughs> okay, so it depends whether it is for own stay or for, or for investment, all right? Okay, uh, tell me has a question. So to make profit, you look at the following rent house and buy for investment. Look for growth property and buy by looking at broader market expect. Okay, guys, um, today is a short session, all right? Uh, to buy a property is not just using ABC and plug in plug and play it's not like that right we got to look into uh, um, renting a house is first to understand your cost of housing right once you understand the cost of housing you buy for investment yes that would be the best play that would be the best uh, strategy then we look for growth properties by looking at the broader and the micro okay so there are some places for example I won't recommend to purchase because um, over the past one and a half years the developer has already increased the price so much that today the price that you buy in or at the price that the originally sold has a price gap of two hundred thousand dollars. So to me, it does not sit easy with me, and therefore I'll be looking at other alternatives to put my money. Okay, Taming, I hope this answers your your, your question. Wow, <laughs> Christine, <laughs> Christine, you stay there. Okay, um, I don't like dairy farm area properties in terms of investment. Okay, not I have nothing against the area, but I always look for the same the same uh, uh, dollar investment for the same X number that I'm going to use for my seed capital. I'll open up the entire of Singapore and ask myself which is the best investment that I can actually put my money to work. All right, and if everything has 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 actually gone up and things have readjusted in dairy farm, I might go into dairy farm. But then again, it has to show me that that signal because I ever. Explained to you before, uh, at Dairy Farm area, there is a place called Treehouse, right? So this is a short and quick one. If you look at Treehouse at the time, back in 09, right, when it was launched, no one was asking or buying that property over there. In 09, people will buy properties at Marina area, Marina Bay Suites, right? They can buy reflections. Because these are so market crazy, right? Where you they think you never go wrong because you have your MRT there, la, you have CV there, la, it's such a prime market. La, why want to buy Dairy Farm? Area, but you might you can see that tree house so so cheap at the time, all right? Because I think the land bid was really cheap, and my economics is that whatever that is so cheap can only be expensive. Make sense? Because people would then look for alternative when they cannot afford. If this place is new, you realize that uh, tree house as pe uh, the owners there has actually made half a million dollars. Four hundred hundred thousand dollars in comparison to reflections where a lot of them lost money and even uh, Marina Bay Suites. Yeah. So I wouldn't say personally, okay, maybe I have to correct my answer. I don't like as in I don't like, but I don't see that 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 spark whereby my money is able to give me a good return in the next three to five years. Okay, Christine, is there any does that answer your, your question? <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, guys, if there's no other questions, let me just, right? If there's no other questions, oops. Any clue why these two are not end blocking? Hey, William, okay. Um, in fact, I think these whole properties will be end blocking now. Uh, I personally think that um, developers are a bit worried 
also. They do not know when the government might introduce new measures, right? Um, and at the same time, you realize that uh, since late last year and this year, the properties that are on block are actually smaller quantums, smaller land sizes. We don't have mega sales anymore because you will need a consortium of two to three people coming in to buy properties, all right? Um, but if you were to if you were to compare between a leasehold property and a freehold property, I would think a leasehold property might stand a higher chance of unblocking. And why do I say that? Put yourself in a position of a leasehold and a freehold property owner, okay? If a developer comes and knocks on the door of a freehold property, and if the price is not within whatever that you hope to get, you choose not to sell because it's a freehold land, right? But today, if I knock on the door, you as a leasehold owner, and the property is now balanced with only 50 or 45 years or 40 years, you think you, if you can sell, better sell and run really, isn't it? Because you also know that when the lease goes to zero, the house is worth zero. Okay? So I think leasehold properties will be unlocking. Uh, um, that's what I personally believe uh, in the next one year. So let's see how it pans out. Okay, uh, there are some chats over here. Let me just see. Yeah, go chat also. <laughs> okay, all right. Worries. What will you comment on Kenny Hill Pierce? So what? Not launched yet. Lah. Okay, um, Roger, I have not looked into that yet. All right. Um, to me, I'm quite wary to put money in CCR. The only CCR that I wanted to put money in was actually uh, uh, Midtown Modern at, at that time. Okay. So because the budget is really, very high for the area and the units are very, very small. And you know that a lot of people living in the CCR area, are a lot of foreigners who are living there and they like big spaces. All right. And uh, uh, what I heard from the ground from my guys who are doing the CCR area is that it is actually the bigger spaces, the three bedrooms that are moving very well, more popular. Uh, River Valley, the one bedrooms are stuck. It cannot move. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you're able to afford a three bedroom, it would be good. But then again, look back at the price. Look back at the price per square feet. Okay, the per square feet and the quantum is very important. If the quantum is per square feet is going to be too large and there's a lot of other alternative in that area, then to me, I think it's very risky. Yeah. But then again, uh, I have to, to, to study the area. Okay. Um, yes, I've done properties, sale and resale for the past 16 years, guys, but I really don't know the whole of Singapore. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, so new launches normally exactly the like prescription you won't know until the day, right? SJ, thank you for your, your chat and comment. To avoid ABSD and potentially more cooling measures, are commercial properties worth contrary for investment? Yes, uh, you are right. It's something that I'm looking at. Again, I'll ask you to avoid offices. Uh, I'll ask you to avoid industrial, okay? Uh, I'm not a believer of industrial. I really do not know how to exit, but I have uh, uh, customers that had good, good play into it. They invested in the in the in the food factories and so forth, right? Uh, I am not so. I don't know that 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 particular segment. Okay, I think the rental yield is good, but I'm not so sure whether you're able to make capital gains after that. And with the decreasing lease balance, I'm concerned in terms of the resellability at the time. And and I open up the master plan. I see a lot of purple B one B two. Uh, uh, zoning in the whole of Singapore and they have they are going to introduce a lot of 30 years uh, lease properties and if this commercial or industrial properties you buy are around the 38 type of years right I, I think it's hard to exit now. this is in my own, own opinion I, I'm not uh, I'm not good in the industrial area okay um, but personally I SJ I, I think the real gameplay for commercial properties is uh, what I like, which is shop house. Okay, so um, I'm those um, person that is uh, quite sad. Okay, uh, I think last year I've been telling all of you I'm eyeing. Okay, I, I even have some of you wanting to 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 go ahead and buy uh, and look for properties together in the 
in the commercial area, the shop houses. Okay, and I haven't got back to all of you yet because guys, we have been priced out, right? The big funds are coming in. Uh, the the big companies who own the leasehold properties are selling these properties in in this um uh Tanjo Kantong area, the Tanjo Kantong lah, Tanjo Paga area. They're selling their leasehold and converting the freehold trophy trophy collections, right? And I used to look at properties between the region of three to four million dollars. And fortunately, I'm only able to purchase uh, a unit at Geylang area. Now, buying a uh, buying a uh, a uh, shop house also has a whole different metrics, right? We cannot buy property. Imagine if you buy a property, uh, even a condo, in an area where 200 over units, where most of them are actually own stay people, right? There is no volume. It will also mean that your, your condo cannot increase in price. Make sense, right? So we got to then find that area where there is foreign play. Imagine foreigners who want to buy property in Singapore, Okay, they want to buy commercial property in Singapore and, and that segment of playing field for the, for the shop houses has gone up and now the buy-in price starting that is worth buying that has, can give you good capital appreciation it sits at about $8 million. So, yeah, <laughs> I will just answer your question. Okay, uh, shop houses is really awesome, all right? That's why I've been dabbling and thinking to myself, how can I then get an action into this, this, this area? And I think the only way is to find uh, uh, investor, like-minded people, whereby we have to come together with the same mindset and all this has to go with good compliance when I start to manage people's money, right? And we can buy together. If not, I think it's very difficult to buy by yourself. Yep. But this is something that is good for commercial. Okay, uh, SJ, why not offices? Because... Um, offices, honestly, uh, if you're going to buy it for your own use, I think it's perfectly fine. But today, guess where we is? I'm in a house doing this, right? Working from home is going to be kind of a norm. Um, MNCs are going to scale down, right? Offices are going to be something whereby they do not need to have large spaces anymore. Okay? So I feel that offices, uh, if you compare that, i rather um, exercise more delayed gratification, save more money, invest it, grow my money and put that into a shop house, right? That is a safer safer investment. Yeah. Uh, yes, Roger. He raised his hand. Is that a new question or no one done already? Yeah. Uh, for SJ, all three names is already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what you do, Hey, then you know what you do, though. You can find your nieces and nephews. <laughs> I think, okay, so so for the private residential properties, okay, uh, today our golden ticket only your one, right? One person got one, one, correct? So I think you want to, you want, you want to flip that. You move, like what I did from OCR, I move into the RCR. Okay, and I will change my older properties to a new property. So unless all of you, all of them, uh, uh, all of your your children, okay, are already um, used up and their property is not performing, then you leave it. If it's performing and you have a good capital gains, right? I think you should sell that and then buy a better property after that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, SJ. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Tell me, huh? Yeah. Okay. Oh, three minutes, sorry. So, SJ, uh, yeah, guys, um, I'll just put inside to all of you, um, panelists and attendees, okay? This is my website, fast track dot sg that you could go in to apply and we can have a one-on-one -on -one. if not then you can drop me a whatsapp and this is my local number 9220-1458 okay you know guys thank you for coming i hope that this has been enriching right it has been uh, amazing for me to speak to all of you all right and i hope that it can help you to to at least have some thinker think about it and if you're still on the fence I think 
uh, come on board, if you need to have more calculations to understand better, right, go ahead to expand your portfolio, all right? If not, then, see you and Iman. Have a wonderful night, all right? And I'll speak to all of you again. And if those of you have not uh, uh, um, uh, supported and subscribed to my YouTube channel, please come into YouTube, right? Fast Track Property, okay? Right? Good night, then. Bye.